That's what every single piece of property in the New Orleans has spray painted on it. I was teaching at Pilchuck when the storm hit. I sustained about $300,000 worth of damage. After really distilling it for a while and you know living with it, uh, I feel real comfortable about the work now. I think it's a, a you know more thought out, a little not so emotional, abstracted enough where people can approach it. You know, not just you know political commentary and suggestions for my insurance company and things like that. You know? <laughs> I think it is an amazing opportunity for people to come here to work with this crew. You know, they have this audience watching you do work, they have this great interaction. The way you're taken care of, too, I mean, it's all basically built to make you as comfortable as possible to do a body of work that would be very difficult to do in your own shop unless you have an amazing facility and an amazing crew. A great opportunity, I mean, really. I might be the best fly shop in the world. For the senses to come in there. Art, not just as the pieces on the wall, but the uh, creation that's happening, uh, it's more like theater in our hot shop. People come from all over the world to uh, witness what is happening here. The movement, the studio glass movement that has flourished here in the last 25 or so years draws people, particularly young people, from all over the world. And I'm feeling good. I want to tell you how fantastic uh, the Museum of Glass is. It's been the most vital, uh, important um, location on earth uh, for making glass sleep in peace when day is done that's what I mean oh my gosh he's suckling oh look at that little tail since some of the mothers are new to it all the newborns need a bit of human help to survive it's just a recognition that yes I am I'm wanting to suck it's the first time okay you got it now oh god it's so rewarding He's such precious Jesus. Joan and Pierre-Louis Montier farmed wheat for 20 years north of Walla Walla. Then when the wine industry took off in the Walla Walla Valley, the couple got an idea. What goes better with wine than cheese? Gourmet cheese. This one's made from goat's milk. This one from sheep's milk. The reason they come to the valley is because of the wines. Right, right. And then at the wineries, they talk about us. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a mutual, wonderful connection between everyone that is connected to food and wine. It's me. Come goats. Come goats. 
Joan and Pierre Louis embrace slow food. The philosophy started in the mid 80s when another McDonald's opened in Rome. Slow food means knowing exactly where your food comes from and how it is made. The closer to the source and the fresher, the better. My father, he was a wheat farmer all of his life. My grandfather was a wheat farmer. They never used fertilizers, chemicals. All that came in in the 50s. So we've changed our whole idea of what food and freshness means. Packaged for five months, that can't be fresh. I'm flipping them so they don't uh, stick to the mat and uh, that allow the mold to grow evenly all over the cheese. And you can see on my hand the mold. And that's natural mold. It's just in the air. It's hard to think how something so moldy might be fresh, but if you ask the sheriff, who stopped by the fromagerie, to sample the cheese, this ain't no donut. When I'm being a connoisseur of cheese, is what I, I, I relate this, the, the softer cheese to is like a Roquefort cheese. It's um, spicy. Yeah, and it's, there's it's, a twang to it. Yeah, there's kind of a twang to it and yeah. zesty. It, it, it's very good, very unique. It was two years ago when Joan and Pierre-Louis bet the farm, literally, to start up their cheese operation, cashing in their 401ks. With a half a million dollars invested already, they're hoping the market for their gourmet products grows, like the little ones who someday will do their part to make slow food. Switzerland in April is spring defined, the jewel of Lake Geneva, bordered to the south by the Swiss Alps mountain meadows cradling a rich farm culture that survived for centuries. And in the farm town of Chateau Day in southern Switzerland, in this barn, the fruits of last fall's harvest dry to perfection. Klaus, you want to come and get this? <laughs> Hundreds of pounds of marijuana grown in Switzerland, harvested for the world. It's great that you can be doing something like this, helping people, and having a kick at it, too, <laughs> because it is quite a kick. <laughs> it is legal to grow marijuana in Switzerland, but Swiss farmers can't sell it as a recreational drug. So the Swiss Hemp Trading Company, or Switco, sells it for medicinal use. And the only thing that's missing in the United States is a safe and legal source. And this is what they found and what we provide in Switzerland. In the past year, asking only that it be used for medical purposes, Switco sent out about 500 pounds of marijuana through the mail around the world. This is stuff that I've received from Switzerland. They send it in the mail. It comes in a nice package. 11,000 miles away in Roy, Washington, Jess Williams is one of Switco's biggest customers. Somehow, nine marijuana-filled packages got through the mail to him. No problem. In the post office, put a plastic bag around to make sure none of them fell out. I'm glad they did. Nine years ago, Williams drove his motorcycle into a tree, suffering a closed head injury. His career as an AT&T technician was over. Now that's going from the top to the bottom, that fast, and you don't realize it until you get there. Williams now says he needs marijuana to prevent the stress seizures plaguing him since his injury, even if that means going to jail. This is a matter, Your Honor, State of Washington versus Jess Garner Williams II. Pierce County police busted Williams once for growing pot last year, and again in early April for picking up his 10th Switco package at the Roy Post Office. He's going to thumb his nose at the law and the court no matter what. But when the judge set a bail Williams couldn't pay, he had what he later called a stress seizure. <laughs> Pierce County prosecutor Doug Hill didn't buy it. You know, just, just like my five-year-old does when I do something he doesn't like, he acts out. That's what Mr. Williams does. He acts out. Williams' attorney is Jeff Steinborn, who's argued hundreds of marijuana defense cases. The sad part is that here's a man who needs this substance, and the only way to get it is to risk prosecution in order to establish that he's got a right to it. Jess Williams is one of only four Switco customers arrested in the U.S. so far, the others in Oregon, Ohio, and Florida. So that means somehow hundreds of pounds of Switco marijuana made it through the U.S. mail system last year.
To whom this may concern, please send me all information on ham marijuana cannabis. I this letter came in from Massachusetts. My customer enjoy learning about the forbidden medicine. Switco's goal is to keep the medical marijuana issue alive by flooding the U.S. Postal Service with it. People ask for help. And we must react. Like I said, you know, it's for us a kind of first aid. This is some of the very last of the Switzerland crop. And now here in the spring in Switzerland, the attention turns to this year's crop. This 10-acre field about 40 miles north of Geneva is essentially a marijuana pea patch for Switzerland pot farmers. Citizens can rent a plot here, and they'll even start you out with plants. And the result in the summer is an entire hillside filled with marijuana. It's called Cannabio Land, one of 100 Swiss pot farms now growing it for medicine and other uses throughout Switzerland. Bonjour. These starters will become some of the 120,000 plants grown at just this one farm. The consumption in the market is such that uh, it's not going to withstand much more uh, repression or prohibition. So uh, I think it's just a matter of time. In Switzerland, it's done. In the rest of the world, it's uh, following. So. <laughs> And on the other side of the world, this self-described medical marijuana martyr is now back in Pierce County Jail on charges he accepted a 53-pound Switco shipment at his trailer home. I've been telling people this for three and a half years of my life. I've been fighting for my life. I want to live. I don't want to die. I want to live.